on Wild Tangent for many years, and on a lot of other online portals, 20 to 30 percent of the revenue in an online gaming portal is generated by weekly newsletters. As the portal grows up and collects emails, the companies build longer and longer email addresses of uh, dedicated gamers, then build large marketing departments and relationships with mailing companies to send regular opt-in newsletters, here are the new games available this week, here are the new deals. And a mature online gaming portal like Wild Tangent, Real Networks, Pogo, Miniclip generates 20-30% of its revenue from those mail lists. Did Club Penguin start with one of those? No, it takes years to build one. Facebook handed one to Zynga instantly of hundreds of millions of names. Uh, very simple mechanic for enabling and rewarding users for infecting and or engaging. So that mailing list, you know, once you have that mailing list, you hire a marketing department and you have to produce a letter going, here's the thing, or here's a deal, or here's new games coming out. Well, in a social network, that mechanism of marketing, which takes a lot of resources, you've got to be a bigger organization with a big mailing list to justify that investment, got replaced with, I'm just going to send my friends a virtual good that they feel obligated to reciprocate to. And that acts as a referral-based marketing mechanism uh, in the absence of having a really sophisticated marketing department, that works fine. Um, the registration barrier. When you go to a lot of gaming sites, the first thing you see is a big page book. Give me your name and phone number and shoe size and where you live. And I refuse to let you come here and enjoy yourself for free until you give me this stuff. The bounce rate on a registration page is 50%. Mm. So half the people who go, I'd like to play a game, oh, rich page, are gone. That doesn't exist inside a social network. Everybody's registered. So the crossover to the about the game, everybody's got a unique identity certified by the social network so I can skip registration. That means the game is <coughs> twice or has half the friction to viral distribution as a game outside a registration wall. Um, no downloads, which is common, anything based on Flash, but one of the things that generally what you find is that for an arbitrary download, this comes from my wild tangent experience, for any arbitrary download you want to ask somebody to take for a game on the web, the bounce friction for that is another 50%. So adding a download at all has a huge tax to virality. So you can, there's a lot that you're willing to put up with in the crappy production values of Flash in order to avoid that additional friction. Finally, no payment barriers. Uh, game's free. Now, it slows down. You can't decorate your farm as much as you'd like to if you don't pay. It takes you longer. But you can pretty much consume the entire game experience on a more paced out basis. And the game does something interesting. What is interesting about the trade-off between time in a game, a social media game, and paying, which saves you time? By making you, if you refuse to pay, then you have to come back more often in order to get the same result. You have to generate more apparent audience or retention, more monthly visits. So, the penalty for not paying is you have to do a good, better job of shoring up my apparent huge audience number. That's going to get more interesting in a second. Uh, but so the business model, the microcurrency model associated with gifting, has really interesting properties that are uh, that are you know in the U.S. largely new and unique. Uh, you could say that they've appeared in other market examples, but I think social networking's really put a, a fine edge on them that we maybe didn't really understand before. 